So I am going to be working on McCall's 8243 and I want to make view A, which is this romper here. And this is the front of the romper. It does have an extension in the front that the buttons are attached to. There is a collar and then this is what the back looks like. There is a pleat in the back. There are also pleats on the sleeve and a button on the sleeve and then the sleeve has two parts, so there's a front sleeve and a back sleeve. These are the pieces that you will need. And piece number 13 is not listed here, but that is the buttonhole guide. I'm going to be using this 100% cotton fabric from Joann's. I had some floral scrap fabric left over, so I decided to use that to cut out the cuffs and to cut out two pieces of the pocket area. And then I'm using some leftover denim for the other two pieces of the pocket. I am working on step number 18 and I am putting in these stitches here, which will be setting everything for the pleat, the back pleat. So there's a little dot here and then a little dot down here and you are supposed to stitch from here to here with a regular stitch and then between the dot from this dot to the lower dot you are supposed to baste. So what I'm going to do just to make sure I get the line pretty straight and even I'm going to take this ruler and line it up and then I'm going to draw a line from the top dot down to the lower dot so that I'll be able to make sure that my basing stitches are pretty straight. I like using these fricks, I don't know how you say it, Frixion I guess, pins. I have several of them, they come in different colors and they are really, really handy. Okay, so I'm gonna line up these dots, the top dot, make sure it's pretty straight with this lower dot. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and draw the line all the way down. And then I will do my stitching. So this is orange and then the top where you just do a regular stitch. I have it in pink. I noticed my line was a little uneven at the top here, so I'm just gonna straighten that out just a little bit. It matched up pretty well at the bottom, but this top just needed a little adjusting. So I can make sure this is nice and even, so this pleat will come out okay. Okay, I think that's better. So now that the pleat is in, I am working on step number 20 and I am going to stick my finger in here just to open the pleat and make sure the seams are lining up. The top seam here lines up with this bottom seam and then I'm going to press this open. Once I get it all flat, press that down and then baste across the top. And then for step number 21, that is going to be the bottom of the pleat. So it will be pressed and then you're going to sew from the fold here to the seam right here in the middle and you'll do it from this side and then do it from this fold to that side and make sure you don't sew the back. It says to keep the back free so you're just going to sew this whole little section without sewing anything to the back pieces. So this is how the bottom looks after I sewed it all together. 
and this is how the top looks it's just basted here and then this is what it looks like on the outside just it looks just like a regular seam what the directions don't say is that you need to go back in and remove the basting stitches that we put in in step number I think it was 18 these basting stitches that we put in initially you want to go back and open it up so that your pleat will show from the back because right now it just looks like a closed seam but when you release the basting stitches it will open up after step 21 where you finish off the pleat it moves on to sewing the front and the back together at the shoulders and then it moves on to the collar and it doesn't indicate that you do want to open up the basting stitches to reveal the pleat this is where I am so far I have the extension on the collar is on I just still need to do the sleeves and the cuffs and I actually need to go ahead and open these basting stitches there's the pleat for step number 38 you lap the right front over the left extension and I folded it over like this I did stick a pin in here and then I flipped it like this and then I put this part under the sewing machine and I sewed from this corner edge there's a dot here and I sew it over to the seam in the middle. This is how the sleeve is looking with the contrast cuff on. I did sew on the buttonholes and I pulled out my buttons to see if I have any buttons that I want to use. The pattern calls for 12 buttons. There are eight down the front and then there are two on each end of the sleeve. So that's where I am, just looking through my buttons, trying to figure out which buttons I want to use. I didn't find any buttons in my button stash, so I decided to go to Joanne Fabrics to look around and see if maybe I can find some buttons that I thought would look nice with this romper. <laughs> I ended up buying four clear buttons to go on the sleeves. I didn't find any buttons that I really like to go down the center front of the romper, so I ended up just putting snaps down the front. And I also decided at the last minute to add a pocket to the left side of the romper. So my love share is something that Siri can do that I had no idea Siri could do. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Turn on the flashlight. Okay, I turned flashlight on. So I don't know if you can see it. But the flashlight is on. I think that's so cool. Normally, I just go into the phone and turn it on. But I think this is so much easier. 